Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. There is no hope of getting sick, there's no hope of even treating him. You will see him enjoy himself. He will leave the wound there. Flies disturbing it. He will leave it there. The wound will heal by itself. No, no nothing. Could it be that there is something we have learned that has given the devil advantage over us? Could it be that there is something we have been taught that if we did not know it, we would not be this fearful? Technology has increased our fear because it has opened us to the possibilities that exist in this realm. You watch a movie and all of a sudden you just realize that cabbage can kill. You never knew. You ate cabbage, you stole it, you went to people's farm, you looted their products, nothing happened. Now you watch the movie where cabbage killed somebody and you said, this is it. This is it. Hear me, don't just laugh. I'm, I'm probing our convictions. It's time to ask questions. Not to be a rebel, but to ask questions. Everybody marries at 35. I mean, too, I grew up and I saw it like that. I, wouldn't you ask questions? I say, no problem, I'm 22. People served in church, they married at 37. You have not asked questions why they still serve and that happened. Could it be that your generation or your lineage is crying for a savior? And saying, Lord, will you not raise somebody? And God says, you come for koinonia. There is something you must know that will equip you. You need to stamp it at the devil somewhere. Oh, the beauty of light. All of a sudden, you step home and you tell them, I brought good news. You see why the gospel is called good news? What have we been giving people? Bad news. All sorts of bad news. That means what we are preaching is not the gospel. Hallelujah. And you step home and you look at a lady who has not been married and you tell her, I'm not only going to pray for you, I will tell you what is wrong. It's not about you are a prophet. It's spiritual intelligence has made you prophetic. Hallelujah. Knowledge opens up the prophetic dimension in everyone. And so you look and you say, sister, there are certain truths you need to know. And when you know, you will walk out of this. And you begin to share those truths. And as you share, you will see the power of God. Last week, I think there was a gentleman that they brought. They had been, the one I announced, they had been on my case with that guy. I heard the guy was on a bike, minding his business. I don't know which corner he entered. One demon just fell on his head. The guy started speaking nonsense at once. No negotiation. It's amazing. How the devil does not consult with us to try to afflict us. And this gentleman, the family members were confused and all of that. And I said, come for Koinonia. And after the meeting, I didn't even know because I kept announcing, you know, we we're about going and they, they brought the guy. I said, sit down there. When I saw him, I said, my friend, you are going to be delivered now. I was not asking him a question. I was not trying to say, do you have faith? Is your faith working? What size? Is it weak faith or strong faith? All I know is that that demon is living. Period. Period. When you truly have money to give somebody and he asks you for money, you will say, can your hand stretch well or small? Are you ready to take? Take. When you start giving excuses and say, hey, there's, I'm expecting, you know, there's one, this is my uncle, the way this Nigeria is. All those long stories are they are trying to point to one thing. There's no money in your pocket. It's as simple as that. This is how it is spiritually. When we begin to give a lot of excuses and stories, it's a sign that we have not held on to something solid. Oh, that God will make you a savior. This is what this is all about. Brothers and sisters, that God will make you a savior. Forget about the challenges today. Are you getting my point? Don't feel bad. Forget about it. But you tell yourself, I have paid this price once and for all. I said something last week and let me say it again. There has been this 
new discovery that has been stopping a lot of weddings, right? SS and AS. Are you aware of that? Lover boy, are you aware? Are you aware that this can jeopardize your destiny? That is not just enough to be in love. Are you aware of the implications, the questions you will be asked? I was told a very pathetic story of one guy who honestly had been seeing a sister. This guy had prayed. He was so convicted. He was so happy. And they went out on their first date. He was so happy. And then the lady told him, I think whether I'm SS or something, and said, this is the reality. And the guy said, whether he was AS or this. You see, it's a little issue. But now I have your attention. Because there are many of us that are probably asking this question, is this how my life will be? But there is a way out. If you don't believe there is a way out, we don't deserve to call God, God. There is a way out. Oh, there is a way out. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. The scripture I just read says that we have been called into the fellowship of these mysteries. That means the scrolls have been unlocked. Access has been given to us. Go and find out what it takes to reign. Listen, revelation is not knowing what God has said. Revelation is making it, knowing how to make it work in your life. That's revelation. It's not just what God has said. It's knowing how to make it work in your life. Knowing how to make it work in your life. Imagine that with the revelation you have now, after this meeting, you will run. Run to a clinic where you know that somebody that you have been praying and trusting God for, huh? who has been praying and say, well, this is God that brought this thing. And you just tell him, no, I've discovered something new. And I have come to prove it to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Arise from this hospital. And all of a sudden. Joshua Selman was not there. Your HOD was not there. But the God you serve was there. And you will watch that person get up. And your name is brother. So, so, so and so. And all of a sudden you, you go back. See there is a joy. When the word works for you. Not that it is made to work for you. When you provoke it. And you come with a testimony. You know that the word of God is alive. When you pray for someone. And the person says. Do you know. I didn't even tell you the gravity of what I was suffering. It's like. Look at the gentleman who was speaking. This is a growth. A growth is not something you lie about. For those of you who don't believe in miracles. How do you fake a growth? You can fake like many of you think we men of God around do, you can fake that, okay, genotype changed. But do you fake a baby? How do you fake that a woman was barren and now is holding a baby? How do you fake that somebody could not walk and is now standing? There are mysteries. Everyone said there are mysteries. And I'm planting a hunger in every one of us to begin to explore the mysteries of the kingdom. Oh, there are mysteries. When it was time to judge the prophets of Baal, Elijah said, let us go to a mountain. It, he said, no, 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 no. There is a mystery we must invoke. Let's go to a mountain. And Baal said, I know what you are going. I know where you are going. I will meet you there. Other people were saying, why are they going? The ignorant ones always remain in the valley. Those who have knowledge climb the mountain. When they got there, he said, this is how we do it. You invoke Baal and I'll give you enough time. Brothers and sisters, they started calling on Baal. The Bible says they started cutting themselves. What did they understand about sacrifice and the presence of a God? They were cutting themselves to, to produce blood. They wanted blood to come out because they knew that blood is a language. 
is a magnet in the spirit. They look at how they were walking a lot of spiritual laws. And Elijah was laughing. He said, I know what you are trying to do. I'm sure Baal is sleeping. If you were the one, will you be laughing or you will be praying? I say, Lord, let this thing not happen the same way it's happening. I, I, don't disgrace me here. On the strength of spiritual knowledge, a man was laughing at the devil. When it was time, he said, uh -uh, there is a protocol to spiritual things. We don't do things foolishly. Let me have 12 altars. Ah, the spirit of God said, a man of intelligence. Somebody would have just said, let me now show you. Oh God, and you, we do all kinds of things and the devil said, this is it. He said, let me have 12 altars. And when there were 12 altars, he set up everything. Ah, he said, so that you don't think that we manufactured fire, pour water. The foolish people were pouring water. They did not know that there is a mystery of the spirit, the water, and the blood. The Bible says when it comes to the earth, these three entities can open any door. It says there are three that bear witness in heaven. The spirit, the word, and what? The Father, the Spirit, and the Word. But it says when it comes to the earth, there are three elements. Their coexistence will open any door. It says the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And Elijah said, pour water. They were foolishly pouring water. When they finished, he said, oh God. And see the fire that came? The Bible says the fire came and licked up everything. Elijah said, chase them. Kill every single one of them. When he killed them, Jezebel had it. What law was operated? What law? Who is this guy? And suddenly she realized that Elijah was not a normal human being. And Elijah said, I'm done. I came to judge this she goddess called Jezebel because her prophets prospered and the prophets of God were in hiding. But one man was bold. Although there were many prophets, they couldn't come out. They were hiding. Elijah was taking fresh air. They came to disrupt him. He said, fire next fire the third people say we, we are begging you it's not like we are forcing you we are begging you we left our wives at home we are begging you everybody say mysteries say mysteries the occultic realm and witchcraft manipulate people through mysteries are you getting my point now they use spells. They use enchantments. They don't need to see you. They make pronouncements. And when they make those pronouncements, when it comes, if there is darkness in you, it will prevail. Because they are called rulers of darkness. That means their, their dominion is activated when there is darkness. They are called rulers of darkness. But when they come, and they see light. See, all this, I am uncursable. I am unkillable. You better understand the mysteries of the kingdom that activates those realities in your life. Because although you have been claiming and jumping, look at your life. It's already happening. I'm not scaring you. I'm telling you that there is more than what we have been taught. And brothers and sisters, if you do not open your eyes to see, you may not reign in life. There are many churches. There are many pastors struggling. I want crowd. I want this. I want that. And they do not know that there are mysteries in the kingdom. The Bible says, listen. It says, if I be lifted up. Have you read that scripture? Huh? Emoji, let me give you a little clue. If I be lifted up, when a man of God keeps lifting himself, get ready for empty pews. He says, if I be lifted up, I will what? Draw all men unto myself, not unto a man of God. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men. When you keep drawing men to yourself, you will find out that there is very little you can give them. But when you draw men when, when, when you reflect Christ, you stand as an ambassador, God himself. The Bible says, and God added daily to them as many as should be saved. Paul can plant 
Apollos can water but increase exclusively of God. Hallelujah. Tell me what can I do? I can live without you. I can live without you. Tell me what can I do? I can live without you. Listen, do you know that your family is under bondage because there is a mystery that has not been unlocked? Listen, listen, listen. There are mysteries are like spiritual codes of operations. I've shared it again during our series on mysteries of the kingdom. But I'll say it. Mysteries are like codes of operation. Look at me. If you have a drug, right? Just give me a viral cup or anything that I can use. If this is a drug, please look at me. Pharmacist, I'm not a pharmacist, so forgive me. Whether what I'm saying is right or wrong, let's just accept it. Are you getting my point now? In the making of this drug, certain things have been programmed. This drug is like a machine. Is that true? You don't look at it and say, Panadol, don't by any means go to my leg. I'm okay there. The trouble is by this side of my head. Better find a way of positioning yourself and sub what is there. No. No. You pick it up, carry water, close your eyes, throw it in your mouth and take water. You smile. You go back. The Panadol has been programmed to look for what is wrong. Because even you, you don't know what is wrong. You, are, you only know what you feel is wrong. Is that true? So when you go to a doctor... He looks at you and he says, Doctor, I, I don't know what is my eyes. He says, It's not eyes. He says, I'm, I'm the one going through it. I'm telling you, he says, It's not your eyes. Just keep quiet. Take this, take that. And after two days, you come and say, Ah, ah. Doctor, I've been, I started giving myself medication for the past one week. The eyes, the pain has even increased. Say, Who asked you? It was not eye problem, it's the symptom of something else. Listen, mysteries are like spiritual programs. When they come into your territory, it's like an atomic bomb. They open up and they begin, those codes start writing themselves upon your family. So there could be mysteries that invoke barrenness. Listen to me. There could be mysteries that invoke academic failure. There could be mysteries that invoke late marriage. These mysteries ascend through whatever spiritual means. Dreams, enchantments, it says, in six things shall he deliver you. Yea, seven things. It says, you shall be delivered from the scourging tongues of men. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So this code lands like an alien. And it begins to type out in your family that which it was programmed to do. Because mysteries work like the word of God. It's a mimicking. I told you that Satan was called what? Lucifer, the light bearer. He was the one who kept the revelations of the spirit. No word returns to the sender until it accomplishes what it was returned. If for any reason it returns to the sender, a higher word sent it away. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it says, so shall my word be that proceeded forth from my mouth. It shall not return. Hallelujah. It's like an SS1 student who tells a junior student, go and fetch water. And an SS3 student says, go and sleep. Who will he obey? If the SS1 student says, I sent you, he says, mm -mm, no, please. My school father says, I should go and sleep. I'm going to have my siesta. The SS1 student is now, he has joined two of them. Is that true? The integrity of the SS3 student and the SS1 student is what will be. And he says, I will punish you in front of this one to let you know I'm your senior. Or you kneel down. You go and fetch the water and give the junior student and he will use. That's a way of humiliating him to establish his seniority. Hallelujah. Mysteries. Everyone say mysteries. There are many well-meaning Christians, hear me, who are victims of the unlocking of mysteries. Someone comes and matches a charm. Brothers and sisters, this person is returning maybe from church with your Bible, from choir practice. 
Huh? You didn't see anything on, on the ground that shows that there is a charm. But you stepped on it. The charm has been programmed. He said, anybody's leg that steps on you is the person who is there. And you step on it without light. And all of a sudden, you are minding your business and you see another law walking in your members. What is going on? Suddenly your leg, you can't tell again. Ha! The last time I checked, my leg was fine. What is going on? You get up the next day times two, the size. Next day times three. And they go to the hospital and they say, Kai, there's nothing. Doctors now already know. They are tired of the devil. Thank God for what God is doing in hospitals. Many doctors now, when they look at your case, they say, look, I'm advising you. If you know a man of God that is anointed, find him quickly. Because where you are lying down here, three people came, same condition. Thank God for doctors that are spirit-filled. Hallelujah. There are families like that. Brothers and sisters, I'm not the kind of person that sees demons in everything. There are principles. We're intelligent people. But I will deceive you if I tell you evil is not real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I would have, I would have jeopardized the integrity of my calling. This is why many of us go through all kinds of cycles of a lot of things. Brothers and sisters, hear me. When you find yourself in trouble, if you find yourself in a hole, you can't bring yourself out. It says, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. That was the light that came to them. And then he said, arise and shine for your light. Not because you can sit down there forever. But it says when your light comes, then you will arise. Tonight, someone's, how many minutes do we have? I'll minister for a few more minutes and then we'll, I'll take time and we'll minister to the sick. Is that, is that all right? I know that there are people who are trusting God for healings. I'm not the kind of man of God that will say, now, after hearing this message, I hope that as you go back home, do something about it. No, no. Something must be done now. I'm not teaching you to start insulting people and just laugh and say, this man is not powerful because we are all laboring to enter that rest in reality. Listen, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, hear me please. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ gives us access our operating these kingdom principles bring us, it is us taking advantage. Hear me? When you walk in these principles, you are not trying to do something else outside of what Christ has done. It is your partnership with him. You're taking advantage of the access to make it real in your life. Are you getting my point now? Because that's where I understand that there can be confusion. A lot of us have believed that, okay, Jesus have done it. I believe it and I've said so. But I'm not seeing anything in my life. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, it says, If thou sh it shall come to pass in that day, thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day, that these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you. Listen. The Bible tells us again and again that we do not yet see all things under his feet. Please get this. Our walking the word of God is not trying to add to what Christ has done. Our walking the word of God is our response of obedience. Are you getting my point now? It is our proof of faith to make alive that truth. There are laws in the kingdom that were there before the fall of man. I hope you know. Job. I want to come have time. But let me show you something interesting. Let's go to the book of Job. Hallelujah. 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 
Job 38 Behold I show you a mystery This that I'm about to read Happened way Hear me It happened way Before Genesis 1 Job 38 Okay Job, through whatever spiritual mystery I really do not know, but he invoked the presence of God. Then the Lord answered Job out of what? A whirlwind. You see that it was the same whirlwind with the chariots of fire that came and carried Elijah. And said, verse 2, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Who is this that is talking? Job, you are making a lot of noise. I've been listening to you from heaven. You've been saying so many things. You are ranting. Job, I want to speak to you now. Verse 3. Guard up your loins like a man, for I will demand of thee. I want to talk to you using my knowledge as God, and I want you to answer me if you think you have knowledge of that much mystery. Verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the word? That's question 1. So God tells us the earth has foundation. Geography tells us is revolving in space. God said, uh-uh. There is a spiritual mystery. A day, this earth is like a building. What kind of eyes will you see that will turn a God shape into a building? Declare if thou hast understanding. Verse 5. Who laid the measures? That means there was an architect. It was an intentional thing. The earth was measured. It has dimensions. Or who had stretched the line. Like the plumb line you use upon it. Verse 6. Whereupon are the foundations fastened? Like a tent. Or who laid the cornerstone? Verse 7. This God is telling Job. That were you dear. When the morning stars sang together, the day the earth foundation was laid, there was a thanksgiving and foundation laying ceremony. Way before your arrival, this is what happened in the heavens. The morning stars sang together and all the what? I've said, I've said it again and again. Sons of God is not a New Testament concept. It has been there since. Sons of God is not a name. It's an office. Who shut the sea with doors? Brothers and sisters, that means the seas you see, they have spiritual doors. So when we see flooding, we know that a law was activated that opened those doors in the spirit. This is what God is telling us. Hallelujah. There's no such thing as just flooding anyhow. There are people by acts of divination, they have inquired in the archives of spiritual things. When it break forth, as if it issued out of the womb. Verse 9. When I made the cloud a garment and thick darkness a swaddling blood for it. Verse 10. And break up for my decreed place and set bars and doors. God made a decree and said, Sis, make sure you remain here. And said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further. And here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Let's stop there. I just wanted to show you. When did this happen? And what? when this thing happened, Job kept quiet. Job said, wow. Wow. You see why the people worship God? Because heaven is a place of perpetual revelation. God surrounds himself with mysteries. So, the mystery you saw before you bowed down when you stand up is not what you will see again. It's like these lights. The way these lights change, that's how the mysteries around God, there are so many, they keep changing. 
And so in the book of Ezekiel, we see men saying holy. In Revelation, they are still saying holy. They've not stopped. They are saying holy is not that that's their work. They pay them salary for it. No. It is a response. They are not even aware that that long a time had come and gone. Brothers and sisters, hear me. There are mysteries in this kingdom. Say it. There are mysteries. In many parts of this nation, every time they kill men, the people in those territories become richer. What do they know about blood and money? A man of God wrote a powerful book, Blood Money. Let me tell you the truth. Every money is blood money. Every. Whether blood of Jesus or blood of whatever, every money is blood money. Are you learning something? I'm not just teaching you this so that you will have theological knowledge and say, wow, I have something. But it is to sponsor your hunger for spiritual things. So that when men look at you and say, ah, ah, Pastor Femi, you are already healing the sick. What are you looking for? You say, what am I looking for? Paul said that I may know him. When Paul, at the apex of his ministry, saw that there was so little he knew, he said that I may know him. That I may know him. In five minutes, I will show you something that the fasting tonight has done for you because it's a mystery. Fasting is a mystery in the spirit that has not been taught because of the effect it has. We have not been taught that it is part of our spiritual growth process. I want to see you. Isaiah 58. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you more. Isaiah 58. I want to know you more. Silaba Kuradu Shilabariana. I want to know you. I want to know verse 6 verse 6 Isaiah 58 verse 6 is not this the fast that I have chosen that means not every fast carries weight in the spirit there are some fastings that are religiosities that have no power back in them and it's just dead religion. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it says there is a kind of fast that God has chosen. Is this not the kind of fast that I have chosen? It said to lose the what? To lose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens and to do what? To let the oppressed, the word let here is to permit them that they will go free and that you break what? To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. So it is in this kind of fast that you lose the bands of wickedness. In your fasting, you activate a law that strengthens your faith, kills unbelief. I truly believe that fasting primarily addresses one major issue, and that's unbelief. It opens you up your organs of interaction with the spirit all of a sudden all the possibilities in god are the possibilities in you there is a relationship between food your body and this realm that's why gluttony is a sin gluttony is not fornication so why why is it a sin 
lost for food. The same way a man has lost for a woman. Someone has lost, but his own now is not a woman, it's for food. Even if he has eaten, he can hold the bread and lie down and sleep like that. That is gluttony. That's the kind of case that requires deliverance. Fast. Hallelujah. Because, see, excessive food does something to your spirit man. It's like a meter. There is a level to which your eating becomes healthy. It keeps your body. Afterwards, it's like the law of diminishing returns. It's like, it's like you are inverting your spirit. Are you seeing that now? Because you see, your, your spiritual growth is inversely proportional to your flesh. Two of them cannot grow at the same time. Huh? So, when one is growing, the other one must bow. And part of that is achieved in fasting. When you fast and you pray and you declare the word with understanding and spiritual intelligence, you edify yourself, you activate certain things. To lose the bands, that means wickedness has a rope. Hello? It has a rope tying down families. Many of us are, are victims of the bands of wickedness. Like the hands of Samson. A great warrior but tied down. And nothing could be done about it. He said to undo what? Heavy burdens. A luggage that you inherited. You, they gave birth to you in the middle of a spiritual discussion that has nothing to do with you. And like Simon of Cyrene, you just received a luggage on your head you cannot explain. It says, to let the oppressed go free. Listen, there are, there are different kinds of captivity, but there are certain people, the Bible calls them lawful captives. Captives who are in captivity legally. It says, even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I will contend with them that contend with you. I don't know if you need peace in your life, but it's not just going to come by crossing your legs. You must engage spiritual keys. It says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatsoever you bind, whatsoever you cast keys of access verse 8 let's read together then shall what so fasting is a mystery that accelerates revelation he said then shall your light break forth there is something God has been trying to reveal to you. There is a spiritual understanding that steps up your stand in the spirit. But it's been limited. The weight of food and the weight of, of laziness. This inertia that comes with this body. And when you fast, you ease yourself. The Bible says your light breaks forth as the morning. And your health shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. And then the glory of the Lord shall be your what? Reward. It shall be your reward. You will see greater glory upon your life. Greater glory. Physically, in ministry, in life. You begin, that's, see, that's why some people go from strength to strength. When you think they have exhausted everything, they come up with a new dimension. Let me show you one last mystery. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the time now? Isaiah 40. Let's just look at that finally. We hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land All we want Is you 
Verse 28, please let's hurry up. Isaiah 40 from verse 28. I want to teach you a very powerful principle. For those of you who have not listened to the teaching, Secrets of Sustained Glory, please get it. There's nothing as painful as looking at a man and say he once was powerful. He once was anointed. This guy used to have a flourishing ministry. God was alive in his midst. No, it should not be. May you never have the testimony of Ichabod in your life. That the glory has departed. No. Has thou not known? When God begins to probe a man like this. Then he wants to reveal something he has not known. Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God. The Lord. The creator of the ends of the earth. He does what? Number one. He does not have this characteristic in himself. That means he does not have the ability to fail. There is a mystery encapsulated in his person that cannot permit this deficiency. He says, neither is he weary. There's nothing called tiredness. Because it is hope deferred that makes the heart weary. His word is yea and amen. There is no postponing, so he does not know weariness. He says, and there is no searching of his understanding. So he gives us certain things. Number one, mankind can faint. The word faint is to be fatigued, to be tired. We can be weary when what you hope for does not come. When the marriage does not come as when you want it. Are you hearing me? When the admission or the graduation, it is natural. Hear me. It is not a spiritual deficiency as it were. Is part of the predicament that comes with wearing this body. But there is a technology in the spirit and this is what I want to teach you. It says he giveth what? That means there is a supply in the spirit that can bring power to you when you faint. And to those who have no might, he can increase like a meter. He can increase strength. Hallelujah. Next verse. Even what? I hope you know the Bible says the glory of the young people is their strength. So when the strong ones grow weary, it's a sign that we are limited. The youth shall faint. That means in your Christian experience, listen to me, no matter how anointed you are, no matter how blessed you are, a time can come in your life on the strength of the physical happenings in your life. This possibility can be true of you that you can faint hallelujah you trusted god for a great cgpa you saw five points in your dream when you went to check it you saw 1.7 you said lord which what is this again i've already packaged my thanksgiving offering i thought it was five points what is who is confusing me here and then you may be a man of god but at this time it will touch you are you hearing me when you hear that your loved one that you have been praying for finally died, the Bible says, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. That's why you hear certain people just sit down and you hear them talk, and you're like, Sister, are you not born again? Say, so see, if God doesn't help me, well, I, whoever comes, I don't care who, I will shall marry and we'll flog it out when we get married. It's not like the person is not a Christian. This is what is happening. Are you getting my point? Don't criticize people when you see them fainting. And Jesus wept. He wept because he took this body. And it grieved him. Jesus was hungry. And he was staggering. And when he came to a fig tree, he wanted to plug it. And there was no food. And he was angry. He caused the fig tree. Because when you wear this body, you can faint. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Physical fatigue, emotional fatigue, when your hope is postponed. You are trusting God for the job and someone said, um, you'll hear from me, maybe in two weeks time. And you've waited for nine years, no job. Everybody keeps seeing you and says, ah, you should be a, a director now, Abby. and you're even embarrassed. Yes, I'm a director by faith. Please don't, don't embarrass me here. 
must you laugh at me? That's the kind of testimony that some of us have. But let me tell you something. This is the technology. Hi-ya. When you get to this state in the spirit, when it looks like you are about to go down, it says, but they, that means not everybody is interested, but they that wait upon the Lord. I fed my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. If you're a man of God here, let me teach you a secret. Otherwise, one day you will sit before your congregation and start crying. I don't know how many messages I preach in a week. I travel all the time. I'm on, I'm on the road. And there are all kinds of expectations. Every territory that invites me, they are happy. They listen to the messages. They go and invite people. And there is, you see, the anointing is like, the anointing is, is as if you have holes in your body. Are you getting me? You become a conductor of the anointing and it tells on your body that's why when you leave your body and you come back you feel weak right so virtue that concept of virtue going out is real many people have not felt it because they are not anointed they feel the same way from the beginning of the service they didn't bless anybody nothing left but when they touched jesus he felt something he said who touched me ah it created an effect because there are times you are standing on stage and you will receive the pain of somebody. For that small moment, you will feel that pain. And your body will respond. Where is this one coming from? The Holy Ghost said, no, no, no. This is a word of knowledge. But your body is still going to suffer that predicament. So by the time the service is done, a lot has left you. You've preached all of the messages. And then another message is coming and the people say, man of God, we saw in a vision you were doing great things. And you are saying, oh God. One day, you will just fall down and just die. Because you will preach every message. You will now check and say, now which one? Faith, they had it last year. Uh, <laughs> see, those who are pastors are laughing. Because they know what happens every Saturday. Saturdays are the most stressful days for men of God. And uh, uh, they are meeting this because they are there sweating. They are wondering. You go to someone.com, nothing. The heavens are closed. You go to all kinds of things. You try to listen to a man of God's message. You remember that, ah, you shared that in already and you are, you are now wondering and say, oh Lord. Don't let that become part of your life. There is a technology. They that wait. It's a system. It's a mystery. It is a day, day that shout and do stupid things around the presence of God. They that, what do you understand? A waiter, huh? when you go to a very correct restaurant, what a waiter does is that he just stands waiting for your order. Right? They that come into his presence and say, Lord, if you don't help me, there is no help. And phone calls are ringing, man of God, we are calling to remind you that God is going to use you. You keep those things and say, Lord, this is why I'm here. I'm here because of these phone calls. There's so much demand upon me. If you don't increase my capacity and help me. You know that song? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up. The first thing that happens to those who wait upon the Lord is that they shall renew. It's like the charging of a battery. All of a sudden in his presence, God begins to, he fires one revelation that becomes your three-month sermon. One revelation. Hi! I'm, I, it is my testimony 
in his presence all of a sudden you think every message you've exhausted everything and then god gives you an encounter and you start writing and you are sometimes i i wish i can just organize koinonia every day to just unlock that which is in my spirit so your strength let's try that our song again we will run and not be weary i don't know all the stanzas Da, 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 da. Whatever it is, and his joy will be your strength. I will come into his presence. Many of you didn't go to Bible school. We will wait upon the Lord in his presence. His fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored as we wait. Some of you, when they were teaching that song in Sunday school, you were running and scratching people's car and, and stealing money and buying ice cream. When your colleagues were receiving, you were there. They dropped you. Immediately they leave. You now run away. <laughs> Hallelujah. So number one, they shall renew their strength. Physical strength. Spiritual strength. When you see a man five years in ministry, looking as if he has been in ministry for 50 years. Uh, well, you see, where everything is. I just write whether he's there. I can't even remember. And it's, What? laziness, inertia. It says they shall renew their strength. Number two, they shall mount up. Mm. Many of us, I don't want to go into the story of the eagle, but you know that there are times that the eagle needs to defeather itself, shed off the old for the new because you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. You cannot tie a new material with an old one. Their strength is not the same. Hallelujah. And so what happens is that in that place of retreat is the shedding off of that level. There is something that leaves you. The weaknesses. God wants to increase the ministry. He needs to increase your faith. He needs to increase your trust. He needs to increase integrity. Many things happen in that secret place. And then you will mount up. All of a sudden, you come up on stage. And whoa, there is a brand new you. When someone is listening to the message and is busy hitting his head, then he hears another dimension. This is an unending mystery. They shall run. Like Elijah, Elijah told Ahab, saddle your ass and run. Don't worry about me. There is a technology in the spirit that accelerates my life. Don't worry. You see, because when you are staying back in the secret place, it looks like you're a fool. Sometimes you will need to refuse a, a ministration that can honor you greatly. Is it not? You are about to go for a ministration where you know that the honorarium will make you happy. And God says, stay back. There's no true happiness outside of my presence. Stay back and say, Lord, the last time somebody smiled and wanted to give me a car, God said, remain there. But when you remain there, you will run. See, I'm teaching you a powerful secret. That's why when you look, you'll be wondering, is there anything to ENI there? Is there anything to Koinonia? Hold on. When we wait, we will run. Is it not a mystery in the spirit? When you want to run, wait. He said, when you wait, then truly you will run. Hurry, hurry in life. I want to hurry to do ministry. I want to hurry to be man of God. The Bible says, wait. That's how you run. When you wait, then you will run. Jesus Christ was waiting and praying and interacting with the Father. They took the boat and they started going. Six hours they were ahead of him but they were not making any progress. That's how many people are doing ministry. They are doing ministry as if they call themselves. No proof, no sign, no witness. God doesn't confirm anything. They struggle to confirm everything. I oh, know, come on. 
There must be a supernatural dimension to your life. There must be a dimension men cannot explain. That's the proof that you are not alone. If you can explain everything about your ministry, you are doing it alone. There must be a supernatural dimension. They shall run and not be. So all of a sudden, Jesus Christ stands up and starts walking on the water. This is Jesus walking on the water. Strength came upon him. And the disciples, he was about passing them. He said, Master, eh? Master, you can't pass us like this. You are seeing what we are going through. Jesus looked at them. They thought he was a ghost. And Peter said, I like this, your technology. So there is something like this and you left us struggling with the boat when we can walk. Brothers and sisters, drop moving in the boat and wait so that you can receive the feet to run. Are you getting me? Many of us are so slow in our life. We are trying to hurry up and we are leaving the presence of God. And we believe that by leaving the presence of God, you will hurry up in life. You are joking. That's why a man can start a ministry. After 12 years, the man is alone as if God didn't send him. And they say, anybody you see moving like that, forget it. Uh, something must have been done. Is that true? Learn this. If you don't learn anything, if you want to run in the spirit, wait. I want to hurry up and marry. Say, let's walk around. Is it not when they see us? Wait. Ah, you, you think we you think we don't know what you people discuss? Look, let me tell you, it's good to let people see you, huh? But where was Ruth when God was fixing her destiny? Naomi was busy talking to her. She was waiting. When you find yourself running without a track record of waiting, one gentleman sent me a text and he said, man of God, I feel the call. How do I launch out? I replied to him, I said, forget about launching out. Settle down. You see, that's the language. Launch out. In other words, how do I take this thing? The fire that is burning my spirit nobody knows the fire of god if not understood you can misinterpret that fire to mean that it's a sign to run whereas it's a sign to refine you and not be wary he said and they shall walk and the bible tells us in isaiah 43 that when you are walking it means there's fire around you when you walk through the fire so when you are walking through what is killing others you are standing tall. And people are saying, what technologies? Uh -uh. I waited until the fourth man arrived. So I'm not alone. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Come live in me. All my life. Take over, come breathe in me, and I will rise on eagle. Two prayer points very quickly. Two prayer points. Hallelujah. Um, there's a family that that got to contact me. I don't know if they are here. That they, is it a sick person or a, a mad person or someone like that? Are they around? This protocol find out if they are around, then we we'll just minister fast. If they are not around, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Two prayer points. Prayer point number one. Jeremiah 33 verse three says, "Call on to me." And I will answer. He says, I will show you. I will not just tell you. I will show you. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 says, I will stand upon my watch. I will set myself upon the tower to see what the Lord will say. You're going to say, oh God, let the revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. I'm tired of ignorance. I'm tired of living my life anyhow. 
open up the scrolls of the spirit and grant me access to revelation lift your voice and pray inside and outside we are praying now we are praying now it has been given unto you jesus christ paid the price already it has been given unto you to know the mysteries the spiritual codes that govern dominion pray for the sake of your family for the sake of many that you have been anointed to save there are destinies tied to your life don't let them die pray there is a mystery that you will know that will stop these spells these yokes of darkness from your life open our eyes oh god open our eyes pray grant me light i hate fear i cause fear reveal something to me that takes fear out of my life reveal something to me that takes insecurity out of my life reveal something to me that stops competition in my life let me stand on a solid rock koinonia pray open our eyes to the mysteries of the kingdom open our eyes to the operations of spiritual laws hallelujah 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 prayer point number two you're going to pray whether you fasted or not you're all in the corporate atmosphere you're going to pray and say lord every band of wickedness over my life please hear me over my family over my loved ones i stand tonight as an ambassador and i declare that enough is enough those bands be broken now lift your voice and pray Come on, lose those bonds over my family. I declare, I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. I confront witchcraft, the system of evil, the system of death. I challenge you as an ambassador. Thus far as you come, no further shall you go. Pray, pray. Your prayer will prevail. Your prayer will prevail. We confront delay. We confront delay. We confront poverty. We confront late marriage. We confront barrenness. We confront terminal disease. Confront witchcraft, spells, yokes, enchantments, divinations that are carried out in heavenly places. Manda 
Rakatabosa Reketete Bos Stargazing Necromancy We challenge those powers We challenge them We come as ambassadors Sons of light Sons of grace Sons of power Oh, we challenge them. We challenge them. We challenge covens. We challenge spells. We will not be silent. The King of Glory steps into our families. The King of Glory steps into your academics. Enough is enough. Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. I tear down the curtains of wickedness. I tear down the bands of evil. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge failure, challenge delay. Abba, take a tobas. Pray. Something is happening in the spirit. Reketete pokosa. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your job. We tear down spiritual walls, limitations. Be broken. Yokes. Be broken. The spirit of the Lord God is upon us. Five minutes and God is going to do something mighty in this place. The devil must let you go. Shake it. Oh, he must let you go. Victory is imminent. Your God is a few minutes and we're done something must break open in your life tonight hallelujah listen 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 the bible says resist the devil 
and he will flee. Hallelujah. He must flee. Must flee. I tell you, our families must testify that Jesus is alive. And we are tearing down limitations. Lift your hands. There are families that have been limited in many ways. We are going to shout that name Jesus wants. I saw this many times as I pray today. As you shout that name, the sword from heaven will descend upon certain people and there will be a tearing apart. I tell you, a tearing apart. I already sense the anointing of the spirit. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, every family represented here, inside and outside, that have been facing any kind of limitation, I judge that power and I declare that as they shout this name, let it rattle the foundations of witchcraft and sorcery in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you ready now? Man, take up a rataba. One, two, my God, three. I curse those altars. I curse those altars. I curse those altars. I curse those altars. Those altars inside, outside. I cost them. I cost them. I set them on fire. Make go for those. Make it take a part. I come with an apostolic law in the name of Jesus. I invoke the powers of heaven to fight this spirit. I invoke the powers of heaven. I take a lavatage. I release you. I release you. I release you. I release you. I release your family. I release your family. Now, I release your family from witchcraft. I release you from delay. I release you from limitation. I release you. Lift your hands again. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I see at least 12 families. Hear me. The Lord is bringing restoration. Hear me. Restoration. As I begin to speak, God will locate those families. Exact families. Right now, Lord, let your power man to kapa teketa rekete kabashka those families for restoration in the name of Jesus. Let the angel of restoration move inside and outside. Let the angel of restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Sevenfold, sevenfold, sevenfold. I decree it, I declare it. Sevenfold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to break academic bondage. Lift your hands. This suffering is over. Lift your hands. Hear me. You're going to shout that name Jesus again. When you shout it, there are many of us. I'm seeing chains. This is how it will leave you in a shocking way. Are you ready now? Father, everyone here under any spell and bondage of academics in the mighty name of Jesus, we bring that situation under judgment. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. I judge that power. I judge that power. I judge that power. Man, they get the back at the front of the top of the city. 
Sacratica Lebosa. Hallelujah. We'll soon be rounding up. I see a lot of packages that are supposed to have come upon many people. Listen to me. But I see them hanging in the spirit. So many. For many of us, you have seen it in visions. You know it has been released. Man, Tata, as I speak now, as I speak, as I speak now, as I speak now, there is a release. It's, it's coming on people. Right now, right now, right now. I open the heavens. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come now. No matter how long it has stayed in the spirit, I command it. I command it. I command it. I command it. No matter how long, if I be a servant of God, I invoke it. Let it come now. Let it come now. Let it come now. If I be an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, I invoke it. Let it come now. Let it come now. Surely there is an end. Surely there is an end. That situation can change. Surely there is an end. Those of you outside, make sure you are connecting in the spirit. There is no distance in the spirit. You may be so far, but God can locate you and change your life. Lift your hands. Let me speak over your life. Please, I want you to believe it. Every area of your life that looks like a barren wilderness in the name that is above all names, I pray right now let there be fruitfulness in your life. 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 Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Hallelujah. Anyone holding anything that belongs to you, in the name that is above all names i don't care where it is i don't care where they are i release it to your hands now i release it to your hands now i release it to your hands now Anyone who has been victimized here, I don't care what kind of victimization, whether academically, whether in your job, in the name that is above all names, I invoke the justice of God and let it settle this issue. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, any family member unduly sacked, we restore them back in the name of Jesus. Any family member under any case where they are innocent, we vindicate them tonight. We vindicate them tonight. I declare the anointing that makes for favor, the anointing that stops struggle in the life of a man, in the name of Jesus, may that anointing be activated in your life now. Let it be activated in your life now. I command struggle to end in your life now. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And Jabez was more honorable 
than his brethren. That anointing that distinguishes you in the name that is above all names. You will not need to talk about yourself. You will not need to talk about your ministry. You will not need to talk about anything. I invoke an anointing that puts you in a seat of honor. Receive it now. It will come on many people right now. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. It's called honor. It's called honor. I release it upon your life. Anyone sick right now? In any part of your body? You're sick in any part of your body? Or you're standing in for a loved one? It is the final thing we'll do right now. In the name that is above all names. I declare that in this presence of God, I release the healing power of Jesus right now. Sick bodies be healed now. I command SSAS change now. Change now. Change now. I command HIV. You must die now. You must die now. Every mad person here, if there's anyone who is mad or any family member, let your sanity be restored now. Anyone on a sick bed or a dead bed, we command life and we command them to stand up from that sick body, that sick bed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone being attacked and molested in your dreams, assaulted by any spirit of darkness, in the name of Jesus, let a wall of fire surround you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any infirmity that is represented in this place, and for those following us online, in the name that is above all names, we declare be healed right now. Be healed right now. Very quickly, in one minute, there are many people here tonight who want to surrender everything to the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep standing, please. It's not enough to hear the word of the Lord or to go to church or be a Christian. You must come to a point in your life where you make that decision and you say, Lord, I'm surrendering everything. And there are two categories of people. I'll call all of them to come out at once. Those who were invited here most probably who have never really given their hearts to the Lord. You've been going to church. Maybe you are even a worker in church, but you know that you've not made that decision for God. You know that if Jesus Christ comes today, you are not going to heaven. It's a serious issue. It's a serious issue. Second category, there are those who probably you've once given your heart to the Lord, but you found out that there are so many weights and encumbrances that have kept you from walking in authentic Christianity. You have been doing a lot of things and you want to say, I surrender. Those categories of people were out of time. As I mentioned one to five, I know that there are many of you inside and outside. Please run right and come to the stage here. Wherever you are, God bless you. You can start coming. One, wherever you are, you are welcome. You're welcome. Please, let's save our time. The Lord is speaking to you. Don't sit back. Don't wait for anybody to come. You are the first to come. Win the war in your hearts tonight. Win the war in your hearts tonight. I believe that there are so many other people. No one will force you. If you don't come, no one will force you. But the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The Bible says the righteous run to it. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. This is a family that welcomes you gallantly. Nothing to be ashamed of. God bless you. Three. We have just two more counts. Let's save time. The Lord is still speaking to some more people. 
I sense that the Lord is still speaking to some more people, especially those outside. Find your way very quickly and come to the front. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see a lady in this place. You are a lesbian. Listen. It's not like maybe a challenge you are suffering. You are a lesbian. You were initiated in it. Hallelujah. That power is broken over your life and you must get out of that demonic thing. Hallelujah. You are a lesbian. In fact, I see the lady right now, but I'm not going to call you out so that it doesn't create any stigma around your life. But please, if you need help, there's always room to book for counseling immediately after. We're here to help you. Desist from all those works of darkness. They corrupt and eat up your destiny. Hallelujah. Those of you in front, I love you. God bless you. Thank you for the courage to take this step. Just lift your right hands as we pray. I want to lead you in a prayer of salvation. The prayer that makes Jesus Savior and Lord of your life. Jesus said, was many who will come to me, I will in no wise cast away. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you and I love you with all my heart. I ask for forgiveness. I believe that Jesus died and rose again for me. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that from today, I'm a changed person. I'm a child of God. I'm saved. My name is in the book of life. The power of sin is broken over my life. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Use me. Glorify God through my life. From today, I move forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. You brought these ones to bless them. You brought them to change them. We receive them. We love them. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you will make mighty men and women out of these ones. The power of sin is broken over your life. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Your power is broken over them forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for this wonderful decision. This is the best decision you have made. I'd like you to do just one thing. Please follow the ushers. They're waving their hands. They'll have your details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's keep standing. Just give me two to three minutes and we're out of here. Those of us who are worshiping with us here at Koinonia for the first time, especially those of us who are coming from far, wherever you are, inside and outside, the Lord bless you. I'd like you to jump up on your feet and make your way to the front right now. We want to pray and bless and speak over your life. Make sure no newcomer is seated close to you. God bless you. Please keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Come on. Our clapping is an act of thanksgiving. We are saying thank you, Lord, for bringing these ones. Don't remain on your seat. There are many people who are supposed to come out here. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Those of you worshiping with us for the first time, thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. We love you. We bless you. We want to prophesy upon your life. This that we give you money will not be able to buy. And I pray that the Lord will honor you. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and let's speak over their lives. We bless you. We bless you. You will never remain the same. We bless you with an unusual anointing. We bless you with the wisdom of the spirit. We bless you with passion for spiritual things. You walk in the presence and the glory of God in new and strange dimensions. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. We are here every Friday, 6 p.m. And then the last Friday of the month is our miracle service. You're more than invited. Next time, come with your loved ones. Come with everyone. You, you get value for your time. The Lord will really, really honor you. Hallelujah. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, 
kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for